Gödel's ontological proof is a formal argument by the mathematician Kurt Gödel (1906–1978) for God's existence. More precisely, it presupposes the notion of positive and negative properties, and proves the necessary existence of an object which each positive property, but no negative property, applies to. The argument is in a line of development that goes back to Anselm of Canterbury Saint Anselm's ontological argument, in its most succinct form, is as follows. God, by definition, is that for which no greater can be conceived. God exists in the understanding. If God exists in the understanding, we could imagine him to be greater by existing in reality. Therefore, God must exist." A more elaborate version was given by Gottfried Leibniz This is the version that Gödel studied and attempted to clarify with his ontological argument. Gödel left a 14-point outline of his philosophical beliefs in his papers. Points relevant to the ontological proof include 4. There are other worlds and rational beings of a different and higher kind. 5. The world in which we live is not the only one in which we shall live or have lived. 13. There is a scientific exact philosophy and theology, which deals with concepts of the highest abstractness, and this is also most highly fruitful for science. 14. Religions are, for the most part, bad, but religion is not. Topic: History. The first version of the ontological proof in Gödel's papers is dated around 1941. Gödel is not known to have told anyone about his work on the proof until 1970, when he thought he was dying. In February, he allowed Dana Scott to copy out a version of the proof, which circulated privately. In August 1970, Gödel told Oscar Morgenstern that he was satisfied with the proof, but Morgenstern recorded in his diary entry for 29 August 1970, that Gödel would not publish because he was afraid that others might think that he actually believes in God, whereas he is only engaged in a logical investigation that is, in showing that such a proof with classical assumptions completeness, etc. correspondingly axiomatized, is possible." Gödel died January 14, 1978. Another version, slightly different from Scott's, was found in his papers. It was finally published, together with Scott's version, in 1987. Morgenstern's diary is an important and usually reliable source for Gödel's later years, but the implication of the August 1970 diary entry that Gödel did not believe in God is not consistent with the other evidence. In letters to his mother, who was not a churchgoer and had raised Kurt and his brother as freethinkers, Gödel argued at length for a belief in an afterlife. He did the same in an interview with a skeptical Hao Wong, who said, I expressed my doubts as Ji spoke. Gödel smiled as he replied to my questions, obviously aware that his answers were not convincing me. Wong reports that Gödel's wife, Adele, two days after Gödel's death, told Wong that, Gödel, although he did not go to church, was religious and read the Bible in bed every Sunday morning. In an unmailed answer to a questionnaire, Gödel described his religion as baptized Lutheran but not member of any religious congregation. My belief is theistic, not pantheistic, following Leibniz rather than Spinoza. Topic: <laughs> Outline The proof uses modal logic, which distinguishes between necessary truths and contingent truths. In the most common semantics for modal logic, many possible worlds are considered. A truth is necessary if it is true in all possible worlds. By contrast, a truth is contingent if it just happens to be the case. For instance, more than half of this planet is covered by water is a contingent truth, that relies upon which planet this planet is. If a statement happens to be true in our world, but is false in another world, then it is a contingent truth. A statement that is true in some world not necessarily our own is called a possible truth. 
Furthermore, the proof uses higher order modal logic because the definition of God employs an explicit quantification over properties. First, Gödel axiomatizes the notion of a positive property. For each property phi, either phi or its negation phi must be positive, but not both axiom two. If a positive property phi implies a property psi in each possible world, then psi is positive two axiom one. Gödel then argues that each positive property is possibly exemplified, i.e. applies at least to some object in some world theorem 1. Defining an object to be godlike if it has all positive properties definition 1, and requiring that property to be positive itself axiom 3, Gödel shows that in some possible world a godlike object exists theorem 2, called God. In the following, Gödel proceeds to prove that a godlike object exists in every possible world. To this end, he defines essences, if x is an object in some world, then a property phi is said to be an essence of x if phi x is true in that world and if phi necessarily entails all other properties that x has in that world definition two. Requiring positive properties being positive in every possible world axiom four, Gödel can show that godlikeness is an essence of a godlike object theorem three. Now, x is said to exist necessarily if, for every essence phi of x, there is an element y with property phi in every possible world definition 3. Axiom 5 requires necessary existence to be a positive property. Hence, it must follow from godlikeness. Moreover, godlikeness is an essence of God, since it entails all positive properties, and any non-positive property is the negation of some positive property, so God cannot have any non-positive properties. Since necessary existence is also a positive property axiom 5, it must be a property of every godlike object, as every godlike object has all the positive properties definition 1. Since any godlike object is necessarily existent, it follows that any godlike object in one world is a godlike object in all worlds, by the definition of necessary existence. Given the existence of a godlike object in one world, proven above, we may conclude that there is a godlike object in every possible world, as required theorem 4. Besides axiom 1 to 5 and definition 1 to 3, a few other axioms from modal logic were tacitly used in the proof. From these hypotheses, it is also possible to prove that there is only one God in each world by Leibniz's law, the identity of indiscernibles, two or more objects are identical the same if they have all their properties in common, and so, there would only be one object in each world that possesses property G. Gödel did not attempt to do so however, as he purposely limited his proof to the issue of existence, rather than uniqueness. Symbolic notation Ax, 1 P Phi White medium square X Phi X Psi X P Psi Ax, 2 P Phi P Phi Th one P Phi X Phi X DF one G X Phi P Phi Phi X X three P G TH two X G X D F two Phi S X Phi X Psi Psi X White medium square Y Phi Y Psi Y X four P phi white medium square P phi th three G x G s x d f three E x phi phi s x white medium square y phi y x five P e th four 
wide medium square x g x display style begin array r l text x one and left p var phi wedge box for all x var phi x right arrow psi x right right arrow p psi text x two and p neg var phi left right arrow neg p var phi text th one and p var phi right arrow diamond exists x var phi x text df one and g x left right arrow for all var phi p var phi right arrow var phi x text x three and p g text th two and diamond exists x g x text df two and var phi text s x left right arrow var phi x wedge for all psi left psi x right arrow box for all y var phi y right arrow psi Y right text x four and p var phi right arrow box p var phi text th three and g x right arrow g text s x text df three and e x left right arrow for all var phi var phi text s x right arrow box exists y var phi y text x five and p e text th four and box exists x g x end array. There is an ongoing open source effort to formalize go Godel's proof to a level that is suitable for automated theorem proving or at least computer verification via proof assistance. The effort made headlines in German newspapers. According to the authors of this effort, they were inspired by Melvin Fitting's book. Criticism <coughs> 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 Most criticism of Gödel's proof is aimed at its axioms, as with any proof in any logical system, if the axioms the proof depends on are doubted, then the conclusions can be doubted. This is particularly applicable to Gödel's proof, because it rests on five axioms, some of which are questionable. A proof does not necessitate that the conclusion be correct, but rather that by accepting the axioms, the conclusion follows logically. Many philosophers have called the axioms into question. The first layer of criticism is simply that there are no arguments presented that give reasons why the axioms are true. A second layer is that these particular axioms lead to unwelcome conclusions. This line of thought was argued by Jordan Howard Sobel, showing that if the axioms are accepted, they lead to a modal collapse, where every statement that is true is necessarily true, i.e. the sets of necessary, of contingent, and of possible truths all coincide provided there are accessible worlds at all. According to Coons, Sobel suggested that Gödel might have welcomed modal collapse. There are suggested amendments to the proof, presented by C. Anthony Anderson, but argued to be refutable by Anderson and Michael Gettings. Sobel's proof of modal collapse has been questioned by Robert Coons, but a counter defense by Sobel has been given. In 2014, Christoph Benzmuller and Bruno Waltz and Logel Paleo gave a computer checked proof of modal collapse. In the same paper, they suspected Gödel's original version of the axioms to be inconsistent. In 2016, they gave a computer proof that this version implies white medium square. Display style diamond box bot, i.e., is inconsistent in every modal logic with a reflexive or symmetric accessibility relation. Gödel's proof has also been questioned by Graham Oppie, asking whether lots of other almost gods would also be proven by Gödel's axioms. This counter argument has been questioned by Gettings, who agrees that the axioms might be questioned, but disagrees that Oppie's particular counter example can be shown from Gödel's axioms. Religious scholars such as Fr. Robert J. Spitzer have accepted Gödel's proof, calling it an improvement over the Anselmian ontological argument which does not work. There are, however, many more criticisms, most focusing on the philosophically interesting question of whether these axioms must be rejected to avoid odd conclusions. The broader criticism is that even if the axioms cannot be shown to be false, that does not mean that they are true. Hilbert's famous remark about interchangeability of the primitives' names applies to those in Gödel's ontological axioms positive, godlike, essence, as well as to those in Hilbert's geometry axioms point, line, plane. According to André Fermin 2005, it remains to show that the dazzling notion prescribed by traditions and often believed to be essentially mysterious satisfies Gödel's axioms. This is not a mathematical, but merely a theological task. 
It is this task which decides which religions God has been proven to exist. In literature A humorous variant of Gödel's ontological proof is mentioned in Quentin Cantrell's novel The Jolly Coroner. The proof is also mentioned in the TV series Hand of God. See also Existence of God Philosophy of religion Theism Ontological argument equals equals notes <laughs>